The five-year-old nonprofit So Say We All is a writing and storytelling workshop that helps everyday San Diegans tell their stories in front of an audience at local venues like bars and cafes. Their latest program is a series of writing workshops for military veterans. Joining me with the details are my guests, So Say We All co-founder Justin uh, Hudnall and Marion Wilson, professor of writing, board member, volunteer, and performer for the group's monthly showcases. Welcome. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Now, Justin, uh, why did you help start this storytelling group? Well, um, you know, the short answer is because we just felt like um, musicians were getting too much attention, on, <laughs> too, too much access to my audience. I was, I, I moved back, I'm, I'm from San Diego and I moved back here and, and uh, a small group of writers that I was working with really felt like we wanted to have a way of um, kind of, you know, the reader completes the writer and we wanted to, to get a break from these long stretches we took of writing and get that validation an audience gave. And then after doing what we thought was a one-off, the response we got from people who wanted to get on stage also was so great, we just kind of kept snowballing until it became a nonprofit. <laughs> uh, who, who can participate in this nonprofit, and what's the criteria for becoming a, a performer on the showcase? Literally anyone can do it because every, everybody has a story. So we, we put out themes that are really, um, they're just as prompts to kind of contextualize a show, get the creative juices flowing. Anyone can submit, and then once they submit, we uh, accept about eight per showcase about, on average, and then put them through a month of boot camp. So you do not have to be a professional writer. I know a lot of people feel like they need permission to call themselves writers, so which is why we call them storytellers, because if you've ever had a bad day and a drink and a victim, you've told a story. <laughs> <laughs> There's plenty of those right. around. <laughs> How many people are involved? Um, on Within the organization itself, uh, we only have about two employees, myself included, and then the board, which is about six people, including Marion. Um, but over the years, we've worked with literally hundreds of hundreds people. Hundreds of participants. Mm -hmm. No, Marion, you were one of the participants. You performed yes. a personal story at a showcase last December. Uh, let's take a look. It sounds silly, but I just hadn't considered why Dad might be taking better care of himself. Perhaps I just thought that mom's death had made him feel his own mortality. As we walked through the dairy aisle, I tried to absorb the idea that my dad was taking better care of himself because for the first time in more than 40 years, he was anticipating someone other than mom or his doctors seeing him naked. <laughs> At least he hoped so, <laughs> or maybe already had. Now this is a very personal story with a little bit of humor in it. Why did you want to tell it before an audience? Well, um, as, as many people know, ha you know, losing someone close to you, you know, you just say something like, my mom died. I mean, there's so much more to it than that. It doesn't, that, that's not the story. That's not the experience of it. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and I knew I wasn't alone. I, I, I know people have their parents pass away. And so putting it out there uh, helped me feel less alone because I did have people come up to me afterwards saying, I had that Christmas too. Mm -hmm. Now, um, Justin, I, I know some of your writers, like uh, Marion, share these very personal, embarrassing, or sometimes very uh, touching stories. Why do you think they're um, sharing these types of stories? What do you think it does for the performers and, and the audience as well? Well, I mean, I think what Marion hit on is, is the phenomenon that really kind of answers that question. Every time anybody who's like a first-timer gets really nervous before they're about to get on stage, I always tell them it's going to go by in a second, and then afterwards there's going to be a line of people who want to tell you their story. And I, so I, what I think is happening is, you know, we really just know so little about each other. We, we, we air so little of our laundry, and, and it, it's a protective instinct, but really once you start unburdening yourself and telling that story and telling it artfully, and with a mind of um, connecting with other people, what you get is this kind of laugh of recognition and, and then the shared experience. And I think it's a way of getting rid of these awful things we carry around with us, like shame and guilt and regret and all these things that wear us down over time. When you own your story, it stops having power over you. And it just briefly, we'll have to end on this, Marion. Um, so say we all does community outreach, and right now there's a focus on writing workshops for veterans. Uh, tell us how, how that's been going. It, it's fantastic. Uh, we have, um, oh, we're working with the, the San Diego Public Library and we're reaching out to veterans of all ages, recent veterans, um, veterans from 
decades ago uh, to talk about the idea of homecoming, right? Something that, that is a shared experience among veterans and to get them to share their story of their homecoming. And so we have workshops and we're trying to put together a publication of these stories. Well, that'll be interesting. We have a lot more about that on our website, kpbs.org. Marian Wilson and Justin uh, Hadnall, thank you very much. And I want to let folks know that the next So Say We All uh, storytelling showcase is tomorrow night, Thursday, July 31st, at the Whistle Stop in South Park. The performance starts at 8.30.